Then the crowd will get warmed up. They'll have their nachos and stuff for the final one-on-one -on -one matchup that was teased on a sign that someone brought to the, to the Survivor Series. Um, it'll be the game, Triple H and the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, former DX, I guess, for, well, currently in DX. Um, I honestly think that when WrestleMania comes around and they do go for Triple H and Shawn Michaels, the DX thing should just be disbanded. It should be the King of Kings, the Cerebral Assassin, the game, Triple H, against the showstopper, the headliner, the main event, Mr. WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels. Not DX, Triple H versus DX, Shawn Michaels. These two will somehow turn on each other. Um, this thing will have all been instigated by the Sweet Chin Music at the very start of the Triple Threat Match at Survivor Series for the WWE Championship, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, who have not wrestled one-on-one -on -one since that near Iron Man Hell in a Cell at Bad Blood in 2004. Um, these two had a pretty good rivalry, in my estimation, through 2002 to 2004 when Shawn Michaels came back at SummerSlam and had the unsanctioned ma match with Triple H. They've had last man standing matches. They've been in world title matches. They've faced each other through and through, obviously in that Hell in a Cell. Um, match in 2004, but without evolution, without anything else pushing him back, this would be the penultimate match at WrestleMania. This would be, I think, the best match, aside from Money in the Bank. Um, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, I mean, these two, they've been kicking ass uh, for a long time in WWE. Triple H has been there for 14 years. Going on 15, Shawn Michaels has been there for almost 21 or 22 years. Um, I think these guys, these guys can still go. Obviously, Triple H can go. Shawn Michaels, I think, still can do it. Uh, the electricity, I think the the electricity should be off the the charts if in in this matchup between these two. It's not as iconic as. Rock Hogan or Hulk Andre or all the other matches or Taker Shawn Michaels. I mean, that was iconic in itself. Um, but like I said, with the Undertaker facing Cena, not going to be as good as Shawn, as his match with Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels is not going to have as good a match as he did with the Undertaker last year, but I think it should be perhaps the best match of this card. Uh, it's, a, it's almost a dream match now because they haven't wrestled each other in five years in WWE. They labeled that Hell in a Cell as it would be their last one-on-one -on -one confrontation. But we, as old-time fans, kind of hold something near in our heart for this particular matchup. Um, as it is the game versus the showstopper. And Triple H won. If you can remember, the last Triple H has won the last Hell in a Cell matchup. The, the last match that they had one-on-one, -on -one, did these two. Um, Triple H picked up the victory in that. Another hard one to call. It is a Raw brand match. Um, very, very tough call. I don't think Shawn Michaels really needs to win at WrestleMania. He is called Mr. WrestleMania, but his record tells it differently. Um, he's had two, maybe three, four... And ever since he came back, he's had some really good... He's been in really good matches. Uh, with Chris Jericho, the triple threat match at WrestleMania 20 with Kurt Angle. Mr. McMahon went no, no holds barred against Cena. And then obviously the last couple of years, the retirement party for Ric Flair. And then obviously with The Undertaker last year. Um, I don't think Shawn Michaels will need to win this match. He should have a good enough performance that it will be remembered as maybe his retirement party. But uh, Shawn Michaels has said that he's still going to be around for a while. But in this particular competition, I think the game will pick up the victory at WrestleMania if they have it. And then finally, the main event for the WWE Championship. Another triple threat match. Which is kind of, dis it disdains me because... Um, we have not had two one-on-one -on -one title matches since WrestleMania 23. Either one has been at one match has been singles and one's been triple threat. 
happened the last couple of years. This year, we're going to have two triple threat matches at WrestleMania for the big titles. And it will be featuring the last three. The last three um, men who are in the ring in that breakthrough battle royal in November. We talked about Sheamus winning the WWE Championship from John Cena. Um, was it too soon? I think so. And I'll kind of explain it. As I mentioned the participants. You got Sheamus in there. You have Kofi Kingston. Who is also up and coming. Who is, I guess, one of the, the top two young guys right now on Raw. And then you have Randy Orton. Who is in this match by... Sheer fate. He will not win the Royal Rumble. It was kind of confusing for me to see who would be champion in this match. Either Sheamus or Randy Orton. I didn't think Kofi would be WWE champion this quick. Um, I didn't think Sheamus would be champion this quick. Uh, so I either thought Randy Orton would win his second Royal Rumble. Or he would win the WWE Championship by fate. Uh, in a random match that would get booked, or in one in the Elimination Chamber in February um, at Elimination Chamber, which I personally think they shouldn't have changed the title. That it should have been no way out. Should have stayed that because there is no way out of the chambers. But um, I do have Randy Orton walking in as champion by that sheer fate. Of winning it somehow and uh, as far as Sheamus goes I figured that this I would chose Sheamus to win this match even though again you have the two heel one face scenario uh, in this match where Kofi is the only uh, crowd favorite um, this was the match where I thought Sheamus would actually win the WWE Championship for the first time to cement his Celtic war path and win in the main event of the grandest stage of them all and cement officially the uh, the success of bringing the young talent up and uh, this being its biggest achievement as Sheamus goes in with the WWE Championship but Sheamus has it and all of those reminds me about Brock Lesnar beat The Rock a few, roughly four or five months in to when Brock Lesnar joined WWE. Um, but he would lose the belt. Brock did, and he would win in the main event of WrestleMania 19 against Kurt Angle to get the second WWE title. Um, this may be. With Orton now walking in as champion, Sheamus have already won the title. Maybe Kofi could win. Um, I just don't know why. I mean, this is it is rather it gives me a heartache looking at this with these three guys in the match. I have no doubt it's gonna be a, a fine matchup for the world title. Um, just really, who do you choose out of these three? Because the course of history, in my eyes, has practically changed with the booking of Sheamus as the champ now. And now envisioning Randy Orton walking into this match with the title and having to think, oh, Kofi Gibson's going to win. Is he ready for it? Um, was Sheamus ready for it now? Does Randy Orton need another title? Uh, another title reign? I mean, I don't, I don't know. You know maybe uh, I'd be better off with... Uh, you know, having Kofi Kingston and Sheamus do the tag team turmoil match and then have Cody and Ted turn their backs on Randy Orton, which if you played SmackDown vs. Raw 2010, you would understand the storyline of, of that split up. But, um, yeah, your main event, Orton, Sheamus, Kingston for the WWE Championship triple threat match. You make the call on who you think will win.